Hi guys, sorry it's been a while, but today we're back and we're going to be looking at the new Runecam Split Mini. This is the latest addition to the Runecam Split family, and now we've gone to a mini size to fit all of you 2 inch and 3 inch guys that like to uh, fly around and get HD footage. Now, if you're already familiar with the split camera, this is pretty much the same, minus the Wi Fi and the camera lens has actually got a smaller field of view. The HD field of view is at 165 degrees, while the FPV field of view is 130 degrees. So this board is actually measured out in a 20 by 20 size, so it's going to fit you smaller flight controller guys with the uh, Pico F4s and so on. Wiring up the split mini is just as simple as wiring up a normal camera. We can see we've got our voltage, our ground and video. You will also notice we've got RX and TX and that's if you want to stop start recording and change any of the settings uh, remotely with your uh, transmitter. But personally I won't be doing this as it auto starts recording when I power up the quad anyway and then stops and saves the footage when I depower the quad. You can peel off that sticker and reveal the solder points. So as I said I'm only going to use the voltage, ground and video. Also on this board is the SD card holder and the microphone which does record in mono which might bother some people but for me I won't be using it. Um, it's also worth mentioning that you aren't going to get this audio feed through your FPV if you're used to flying and having the audio come back to a earphone or something. The nice thing about this camera is that it's not actually much bigger than a Runcam Micro itself. Now you see it's attached with a ribbon cable and you can see that they have a diagram on here showing how it's installed. It's very important to uh, take note of how this is installed because even I pulled this off and then inserted it back in the wrong way. So obviously I've tested what will happen if you do plug in the ribbon cable the wrong way and it just won't power up. It hasn't damaged the unit in any way. You'll just notice that it does not power up. Included in the box is a bunch of different mounting varieties. Now these are all M2 so it's worth bearing that in mind as we tend to use M3 on most of our 5 inch builds. It's nice that they've included this cable as you can solder it onto those pads and then directly plug it into your existing camera wires. I'll show you that in a moment. It also comes with a fairly standard strong mount for the camera. Some extra metal parts, one will keep the ribbon cable from popping off and the other will stop the SD card from ejecting. And some extra cables if you want to run the FPV through the USB port. So as I mentioned that ribbon cable has to be plugged in the right way. Here I'm showing you the wrong way to do it. As I said when I've powered it up it didn't break anything, it actually just wouldn't power up or work. You just need to flip that around and do it the right way. And here you can see how that metal piece will clamp down with the mounting screws and keep the ribbon cable from popping off. You will also want to do the same with this little piece of metal. Again, this stops the SD card from ejecting if you have a bad crash. You actually have to pull a little lip down and then the SD card will eject. So here's a little demo of that. I've just ejected the card and it doesn't come out. If I pull the little tab down, you'll see that we can now pull it out safely. And just for comparison's sake, here it is against a GoPro Session 5. As you can see, hell of a lot smaller and you're not going to need a dedicated FPV camera as it's built into this. Here it is up against a micro. If I line the mounting holes up, you can see that there's not much size difference apart from the actual case itself. So many of you guys running the smaller quads with smaller flight controllers will be running the M2 standoffs, but as you can see, my current two inch setup runs M3 standoffs, so there's no way to actually fit this in here. But well, if it did, it would look a little bit like this. The way that I was going to get round this was to mount it actually on the top plate. So it will actually be separated from the flight controller. So that's just an idea. If you don't have the holes in the top plate, then you can use the 20 by 20 holes in the split to give you um, a template to cut on the carbon. So you can just see how this actually fits in here, not actually making contact. I did end up pulling that ribbon cable through to the front so it wasn't touching the FC. Now unfortunately part of the reviewer's curse meant that as soon as I powered this up my FC wasn't actually working so I wanted to get out and fly so I ended up sticking this in one of my 5 inch test builds. And I did mention earlier how Runcam makes this very easy by including this cable so you can see I've soldered on the power, ground and video and I'm just going to clip that into the existing um, camera cable. And that's it, that's how hard it is to get up and running with this thing. So from here all I done was put some heat shrink over the split and then zip tie it underneath the top plate as you saw on the smaller 2 inch frame. 
So let's get straight into the FPV footage. Now the first thing you will notice is the diagonal interference lines. Now I never had this when I had the Rotoriot run cam on board. Uh, it is from a filtered power supply so really we shouldn't be getting too many lines and uh, yeah it doesn't look great. And I remember when flying this that the uh, image felt very flat, things didn't stand out very much to me but that could be adjusted in the settings maybe. But if I flip over to a Runcam Swift 2, you can see, uh, well at least I can see uh, from my point of view and from when I was flying, things just felt a little bit better, there was a bit more um, depth to things, things felt a bit more 3D and I could um, see a bit better. So let's switch over to the HD footage, as you can see we've got that wider field of view so we've now got the uh, props in view and some more of the actual frame itself. Um, looking at this, it looks very much like the rest of the Runcam range. Uh, I've used Runcam for a couple of years now. They've had their HD cameras out for years. Um, it's definitely improved on the original Runcam, so it really didn't deal with the wide dynamic range very well. Um, here it's doing pretty well. And it is also a overcast day, so not the best day to uh, perform a camera test. But uh, not every day is going to be bright and sunny, so at least you get to see what it looks like in uh, an average English day. As I mentioned, the audio is recorded in mono on the left ear, so I'll give you a listen to what that sounds like. So that's my first look at the Runcam Split Mini. I'm going to give this 4 stars out of 5. I only have two small gripes with this. First of all the uh, filtering. Um, I would have liked by now for the filtering to be much better. Um, I don't really want to be having to add uh, capacitors to my flight controller and PDB and things just to uh, get my FPV feed to uh, be perfect. The other was the uh, image. It did seem a little bit flat uh, but that's probably subjective. But on the plus point, the uh, HD video looks good and the uh, upgrade to the SD card holder is definitely much better than the original folding cage design that would always snap off. So that's it. I want to keep these videos as short as possible because no one wants to sit there for half an hour watching a review on a camera. So I will follow this video up uh, when it gets sunny and we'll get some nice footage uh, in some better weather. And I'll follow up with a compilation of those uh, bits of footage. So that's it for now guys. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon.